What is up, guys? This is Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you Q&A episode three. Me and little Chris here. What's up, little Chris? Pound it. He pounded with me. No. I know you guys can't see him, but I can see him. And if you guys can't see him, you're not accepting the truth. And the truth has not set you three yet. But besides that, um, I'm going to start up doing a WrestleMania review series on this channel. And what I'm going to be doing is, you know, starting from WrestleManias I'm familiar with um, that I grew up watching. I'm going to start from WrestleMania 16 and end on WrestleMania 27. Uh, to get us all hyped up from WrestleMania. Uh, the reason why I'm not going any lower is because I didn't start watching wrestling until the year 2000. I watched WrestleMania 16 on VHS before I watched 17. That was my actual first WrestleMania I watched. Give my thoughts overall about WrestleMania, how I enjoyed it growing up as a kid. And I think that's more entertaining than me trying to talk about WrestleMania 1 when I don't know really too much about those characters. I, I really don't. I mean, yeah, I can go back and watch them and learn my wrestling history, but certain characters like... Bruno San Martino's son, Dino Bravo, um, other guys that I was never really familiar with, the Warlord, you know, those type of guys I'm not familiar with. I know who the Hulk Hogan is, dude, or the Macho Man, Ricky Savage, but I'm not going to be familiar with a bunch of guys on there, and I think it would be really bad for me to review from WrestleMania 1 onwards, so I'm going to start from WrestleMania 16, and then go on to WrestleMania 27. I will be reviewing those. I got the WrestleMania Anthology back there. And I'm going to be pulling that out. And pretty much that, those videos will most likely you will see on hopefully a daily basis. Hopefully I can get them all in. And I'll be talking about the... Uh, they'll mostly be out before the Super Bowl. I mean, after the Super Bowl. And I'm not going to do the Road to the Giants because obviously no one cared about the Road to the Patriots video. So... The road to the Giants I'm not going to do, but let's get started. Just some channel news before I got started with this Q&A. Let's get started with this. You ready, little Chris? I'm ready too. Do you think pro wrestling would be better, real or fake? Um, To be honest, professional wrestling, and it depends on your preference on what you think. To me, if it was real, it wouldn't be as a form of entertainment that people know. You know, we get a lot of people on here on YouTube that like to troll, or people in real life who, deep down inside, they were once a wrestling fan, but just because it's fake, that they're not fans anymore, and I find that pretty funny. To me, I feel wrestling is a form of art, and it takes certain people to appreciate that art, and you can either love it, you can either hate it, you can be against it, it's your personal opinion where you like it. To me, professional wrestling is better fake, or scripted as I like to call it because if it was fake you would not see the superstars the superstars wouldn't be real and the crowd wouldn't be real and the crowd wouldn't get into it that's fake that's not that's fake to me fake to me is where you can't even imagine seeing them while scripted is it's a storytelling and to be honest I feel that's what makes wrestling so special it's like a male soap opera it's supposed to be storytelling for us it's supposed to get us into and invested in these characters and to me with realness you know the UFC why did they become so popular? They have characters like Chael Sonnen. He's a character in the UFC. They have guys that talk all the time and talk trash. And people are interested in that because it's telling a story there. And they take elements from WWE, WWF, and put them into MMA. That's what makes MMA exciting to most fans. The only reason why it's more exciting is because it's real. WWE started out scripted, and I think it should end scripted. To be honest, it should not ever turn real. It w it, I just think it would lose a lot of appeal to people, you know, looking at it if it was real. Next question comes from the Mr. Justin323. How many WWM events have you been to? Um, I've been to uh, five, pretty much. Uh, I went to the 2004 show where The Rock saved Eugene on the Raw. It, it was an okay Raw, nothing too special there. Then I went to the 2006 Super Show before WWE head to England. They did a Super Show on Sunday. It was Raw and SmackDown. Definitely one of my favorite events I've been to. Uh, you know, the Raw was awesome. Debut of Crime Time. John Cena dissing Kevin Federline on on the microphone with the rap. You know, all that good stuff. Triple H and Orton was the main event. Very good main event. The SmackDown was awesome. Taker versus Gregory Helms. We got Rey Mysterio versus Chavo in that first I Quit match and Batista. King Booker in the world title match. I really did enjoy that Raw. That Raw was pretty... That that show overall was pretty awesome. The Dark Match was a eight-man tag match because this was heading into the time for Cyber Sunday. So they had Batista, John Cena, and DX versus Rated RKO. 
and King Booker and Big Show. It was a short little match because it was fucking late, but awesome show. Definitely worth going to those type of super shows where they film both Raw and SmackDown. And we got a cool little bonus dark match featuring Sylvain Grenier challenging <laughs> Chris Benoit for the United States title. So, yeah, I, I like that show. And then I went to No Way Out 2007. Uh, it, it was all right. The main event was pretty much the only interesting part of that show, and Sky Too Hotty during the worm, and the dark match was RBD versus Shelton Benjamin. Um, then I went to a SmackDown show in 2009. Did not really like it. It was okay. And then I went to SummerSlam 2011 this year. So yeah, I've been to probably one house show, but I don't remember it that much. Uh, I think we left early. It was in Anaheim. It wasn't that enjoyable, so I'm not going to count that as. A WWE event. I've been to a couple of TNA, ROH, and PWG events as well. So I've been to a bunch of events, but this is strictly to the WWE standards, not those other companies. 88 rated Rockstar 88 ask and go check out his channel. He's part of the excellence of wrestling. Who to WWE jobbers would you put as a tag team? Um, to be honest, WWE jobbers that I would put as a tag team. None of these jobbers interest me, and that's the honest truth. They're not a jobber that I completely like. It's not a jobber that I love. It's not a jobber that I will support. Best jobber ever was fucking Funaki for me. Number one, SmackDown announcer. And maybe because he's Asian and I'm a little bit of Asian. But besides that fact, um, none really. I don't care about most of these jobbers. Maybe McIntyre and Rex. I don't know. Um, but thank you for the question anyways. Will Perot number one asks, Chase, do you watch Two and a Half Men, How You Met Your Mother, and Modern Family? I watch Two and a Half Men, but I don't watch it live on TV, mainly because I don't like seeing through commercials. That's how I am. Um, during Raw, I change the channel for commercials. And like like I said, um, it, it all depends for me. I like watching it on DVD. I watch the season sets. You know, I'll get like the season three, season four sets, and I'll sit to watch them through a span of time. It normally takes me about one month to watch it, you know, that kind of stuff. How you, How I Met Your Mother, hate that show. I'm not a huge fan of it. And Modern Family is okay. I watch it every once in a while. Not a huge fan, but it's a very funny show. And I wish I played, um, I mean, watched it more than I should. But I just don't get into TV shows that much. I'm mostly one of those guys that, like, like reality shows, like Biggest Loser, Survivor, or that type of deal. I'm not into, like, the... TV shows, I, that's just me, like, I, I love the old shows, like, I'm like an old school guy, I love Fresh Prince, I love, you know, Boy Meets World, I love those type of shows, Disney Channel shows, you know, that's how, that's what I grew up with, I, Friends, I love Friends, Will and Grace, you know, those type of shows, I, not a huge fan of, like, newer stuff, but Two and a Half Men does have my interest since I was pretty young when it first started, and Jake was always fucking awesome. The Wrestling Wizards, that's Chase. Do you play Skyrim? If you if you not if you haven't not I don't know how he spelled that. You need to get it. It is the best game ever. He put an exclamation point at the end, so which means I have to emphasize all the ever. But besides that point, yes, I have played Skyrim. Skyrim is a very fun game. I do enjoy it. I'm more of an Oblivion fan. I, I love Oblivion to death. I like Oblivion over Skyrim. Skyrim, I think, is overall. Presentation quality wise, I think it is better than Oblivion. I'm not gonna just be place my bias level over Oblivion to say that it's not as good as Sky to say Skyrim was not as good. Skyrim is awesome. I do like a game. And for all you guys that are wondering, oh, should I get Skyrim then if so many people are talking about it? It depends on who you are as a gamer or how you play video games. Like if you're one of those guys like myself who like playing a video game for a long period of time. You buy video games, not like, you don't buy every single new release. You buy a video game because you want to just sit down and play it. And you're not like everyone else who buys a video game every week. All the new releases that come out every Tuesday. Beats it and then afterwards trades it in or does whatever. Or if they really like to keep it on the shelf. If you're one of those guys that likes to sit back, have a video game that you can play for, for a long period of time. Whether it's multiplayer or online uh, or campaign mode or story mode. That type of stuff. Challenge modes like that. This is a game for you. This is like a game where you can sit back and say, man, dude, I'm embracing this world. You can sit back, play every hour or two. That's what's good about Skyrim. It's one of those games where you can play for an hour or two. I suggest only an hour or two because sometimes it will get you will get too addicted if you keep playing it for time on time on ends. Like if you keep playing the game 
and you don't take a break from it, it could really start getting to the point where you don't want to play it anymore. But it's fun to play every hour or two. Um, I currently play Skyrim every once in a while. Like, I get into moods where it's like, uh, maybe I'll play Skyrim. No, I want to play a sports game. I'm like more of a sports game. i not a huge fan of first-person shooters. I used to be a avid Halo and Call of Duty fan and Battlefield fan. But then afterwards, I was like, you know, got lazy playing them and... It got me really fat. I'm, I'm kind of chunky now, if you guys can't tell. You know, I got the boobs right here. But besides that fact, you know, it, it, it just really wasn't working for me. And then afterwards, I opened up that door called Life. I don't know, fucking A. It was weird. It was like, there's skies, there's girls, there was boobs, there was asses. And I was like, yeah, I'll dig with this. And, you know, the sky was blue. There was big boobs and asses, like I mentioned before. There's trees. I could actually breathe. And then I found these things called weights and whatnot. And football and wrestling and all those other activities that actually made you do shit and then I kind of lost interest in first person shooters like I just never found it, my love for first person shooters because I know if I go back to playing first person shooters I'm just going to waste my life playing them so you know Skyrim's a good game for people that really do enjoy playing video games every once in a while and if you're a hardcore gamer it's meant for you I suggest getting it on the PC or the Xbox 360 version. I heard the PS3 version is very glitchy and sucks. So besides that point, hey, I like Skyrim. Sorry if I went too long on there. Not many questions asked for this Q&A. No one likes me. Ah, whatever. I love doing these videos. I love all the fans that ask questions. I love everyone that watches my videos and supports me every week. Final question. Willful, school, willful skill asks, do you think Daniel Bryan will hold the world heavyweight Championship all the way to WrestleMania. <sighs> um, Willful Skill, to be honest, I'm going to be making a video about kind of booking WrestleMania in a way and what matches I would like to see there. So if you can wait for that video, awesome. If you can't um, wait and you want to know what I would have planned for WrestleMania, you can personal message me on Skype. Because I know you have me on Skype. Or personal message me on YouTube to get my answer. Because to be honest I don't really want to talk about it in this video. And then put my WrestleMania video on here. And be like oh if you watch my Q&A. Because most people will probably be like I don't know you do fucking Q&As. Or I get newer viewers coming in. And they don't know that I do Q&As. And I said I talked about it in my Q&A. And you know. And I said I kind of really put the gist on what I would do there. I just don't really want to spoil a video topic that I'll be doing later on when it comes time to make a dream Wrestlemania type of deal for this year. That video will most likely be coming out after Elimination Chamber so if you can wait then and see what I would have preferred then by be it go for it but if you really can't wait and you need to know my answer message me personally and that goes for everyone else who want to know the answer to this question. I just don't really want to spoil a video topic that I'll be doing in the near future. So thank you all guys for asking questions. Comment down below more um, questions. Always love these. Always doing love doing these Q and A's. Ain't that right, little Chris? Oh, if you guys don't know, know who little Chris is, um, he's actually my little friend that you guys cannot see because you guys have not love our troop like I do. Our troop is the best. So you guys got to realize that. And I was in the Mr. Brat Royal Rumble game, and our troop was my man. And our troop got screwed by the Miz. Yeah, Miz is gonna get got. Besides that. Me and little Chris, he's a buddy of mine, and I'll be introducing him. He's sitting on my lap right now. I'm petting him right now. You know, I'm gonna be introducing him most videos because, dude, stop, man. You you are fucking so. Don't touch my hair. Gets kind of fucking needy sometimes, man. Seriously, but you know, I'm gonna be introducing him sometimes. You know, talk about him, talk to him, and if that weirds you guys out that I have a little buddy like Archie has a little Jimmy. I'm sorry. It's just little Chris is just an amazing person, right, little Chris? Don't have me in the nose, asshole. Fucking dodge my punch. But anyways, this is Chase Oliver sixty eight. Our true fuck the world. Remember that. Subscribe above. Inbox me questions. Subscribe to all the links down below. Join the forums. Peace, y'all.